Hi everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt Tu Show, and today I wanted to uh, show you how to, you can calculate critical values on StatKey. So StatKey again is found at uh, lock5stat.com. It's a great program. Um, there's also a book that goes with the program. You're welcome to look at that, but. Um, well, I just want to show you how you can use StatKey to, to look up critical values. Uh, traditionally, again, we would look up critical values on charts. Again, I'm not a big fan of charts. I, I, I uh, think we're kind of in the technology age and we should be using technology to calculate things. Uh, and StatKey has got a great program for looking up critical values. So you just click on this button that says StatKey right here. That gives us to the program. And we're going to be looking at theoretical distributions. Critical values are often based on theoretical distributions like the standard normal distribution for z-scores, uh, the t-distribution or the student t-distribution for t-scores. Uh, then we have also chi-squared and f. So if you kind of look under theoretical distributions right here, right here it says normal. Now the normal one means the really the standard normal um, distributions for looking up critical values. Uh, you can also uh, adapt it and look up um, normal probabilities if you want a normal probability calculator, but today we're just using it to look up critical z-score values. And then here's the t-scores. This uh, x-squared is really chi-squared, it's the Greek letter chi. Chi-square is a very famous distribution used in a lot of things in stats. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on critical values used for confidence intervals. Um, usually, again, we use the z-score, so the normal ones will be used for um, usually proportion, one or two population proportion confidence intervals. T's are usually used for mean average, so one or two population mean average confidence intervals. And then chi-square actually can be used for uh, one population variance or one population standard deviation uh, confidence interval calculation. So um, all three are very useful. This is F. F is a little bit more uh, advanced. That's, the, that's basically the distribution we use with ANOVA. So later on in the class when we get to that we'll be kind of looking back at this distribution here. Alright, so let's look up this. So we said that um, a lot of times statisticians like to use 90%, 95%, or 99% confidence levels when they're calculating confidence intervals. Um, you can really look up any one you want, but uh, those are the most, most used, and 95% is by far the most famous. So it's uh, actually um, more often than not, a confidence interval is often a 95% confidence interval. So let's look these up. Now, the normal button is really think z-score. It doesn't say z-score on it, but that's really what when you're looking up a z-score critical value. A lot of times you'll see it in um, stat books with a z with a little c next to it, just to tell you it's one of these famous critical value z-scores. So if you click on normal, Notice that the mean is set at zero and the standard deviation is set at one. So that's really important. So that, that tells us that we're dealing with a z-score. If you change that, if the mean's not set at zero and the standard deviation is not at one, you'll be calculating some kind of other normal calculation. You're not looking for the z-score critical values. So if we're, in, if we're doing two population, um, two population proportion or one population proportion confidence intervals, this is the critical values we'd want. Now if we're doing two-tailed critical value, uh, two-tailed um, confidence intervals, we want two-tail. So you just click on two-tail. And there's the first one, right? 95% in the middle, we had 2.5% in the tails, and there's the famous critical values. And uh, anybody that's been in stats for a long time has got these memorized because they're so famous. So uh, the two critical values for z-scores for 95% were plus or minus 1.96. Now what if we want to do a 90% confidence interval? Well, I just changed this middle percent to 0 0.9 or 0 0.90 and there we go. Now we got 5% in each tail and there is the two famous critical values for that we use in 90% calculations. So in a lot of traditional programs, if you click a 90% uh, proportion confidence interval, the, the computer's already programmed with these numbers in it. So these are how many standard errors away we need to be to be 90% confident. So we saw that for 95% it was 1.96 standard errors away. 
for 90% uh, confident, we only have to be 1.645 standard errors away. So the two critical values are plus or minus 1.645. What about 99? Well, if you click on this, to click on the middle percentage and change it to 0 0.99, we can look up the critical values for 99%. And again, these are also famous. So the z-score critical value for 99% uh, is going to be plus or minus 2.576. So again, these are very famous. So when you click on one or two proportion confidence intervals, these are the critical values that most computer programs are already programmed with. You can also see that this is implying that the higher the confidence level goes, the farther away we want to be. In other words, more standard errors away. So um, this actually makes the margin of error larger. So 99% confidence levels have a much larger uh, margin of error than our 90%. All right, so that's the three famous Z scores. Let's go back and do now the T scores. Now with T scores, um, critical values, you'll need to know the sample size. This go, usually goes with mean average, so you'll have the, the data um, and some kind of degrees of freedom calculation. Uh, one population degrees of freedom is um, usually n minus one, so one less than your sample size. Two population degrees of freedom is a very, very complicated formula. Uh, I actually love the online, if you go online, there's a lot of online calculators that'll do degrees, two population mean degrees of freedom calculators. So if you actually just Google that, you'll get one that'll pop up and it's an easy way to get your degrees of freedom without having to go through that uh, terrible formula. So basically, once we know our degrees of freedom, we can look up T-scores. Now, so think of a T-score as like a Z-score. It's going to tell us how many standard errors away we need to be for 90% or 95% or 99% confidence. Um, but there's a different T-score for every sample size. William Gossett had the rather brilliant idea, and it makes a lot of sense, that the bigger the data set is, um, the less error you should have, and the smaller the data set is, the more error you have. So um, basically, T's work like a, almost like a built-in error correction on the Z-score uh, for small data sets. So we use them a lot. They're really great uh, for mean average confidence intervals, and really anything um, like one population or two population mean average um, inferential statistics in general, we use these T-scores a lot. So let's suppose I had a data set of 40. That means my degrees of freedom would be 39. 39. And then I would put in OK. Right? And then I could do just like what I did with the z-scores. I can go two tails, since I'm doing two two-tailed confidence intervals. I can, here's my 95, see? It's gonna be a different number for every sample size though, so it's not like the three famous z-score ones. Um, the, this one for 39 degrees of freedom, the 95% T-score critical value would be plus or minus 2.023. Like I say, in the old days, we used to look these up on charts. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of the charts. I kind of like to use technology, and I like the visual of this. Um, now, if I want to go 90%, I just change the middle to 0 0.90. All right, now we got one point net plus or minus 1.685 for 39 degrees of freedom. If I want to go 99, I just change the middle to 0 0.99. Very similar. There we go. And we got our plus or minus 2.709. Now the key with this is that the T distribution, um, you can you, it changes the curve for the uh, degrees of freedom. So basically the smaller the sample size, um, the farther out it gets, right? This is the idea of less random data should have more error. So basically it's a way of increasing the margin of error calculation um, in the confidence intervals. So um, if I had, for example, if I changed the degrees of freedom here from, let's suppose I had a data set of only 20, so that would mean my degrees of freedom was 19. Now my, 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 it doesn't, I know you probably can't tell, but the curve actually has changed. Um, the, the critical values will now be different. Uh, in fact, they'll be bigger. So if we click to tail, you can see now we've gone for 95%, we're at plus or minus 
2.093, a little farther out than for the degrees of freedom 39. If I go 90, 90%, 0 0.9 in the middle, now I'm at plus or minus 1.729, again a little farther out than for the 90% at 39 degrees of freedom. And then we have, of course, 99, we can do that, 0 0.99, if I want to look up that critical value, there we go. And by the way, the, I'm focusing on confidence intervals today, but these are the, kind of the same critical values that we'll be looking up for hypothesis testing. Um, but again, now, then we'll kind of be focusing on maybe it's a right-tailed test or a left-tailed test. So that'll be a little bit different, but it's the same idea. You can look these up with the uh, theoretical distribution calculator and stat key is fabulous. Love it. Now let's look at, um, let's look at another one. So I think I mentioned chi-squared. Now this is kind of going a little overboard for an intro stat class, but chi-square is used in a lot of different calculations and stats. It's very famous in the categorical association test. It's also used to on traditional formula calculations for uh, one population variance or one population standard deviation confidence intervals. So again, if you notice with chi-square, it also has a degrees of freedom. So you have to use the degrees of freedom. So it depends on what situation you're at. You know, um, for example, goodness of fit tests often have a degrees of freedom of k minus one, the number of groups minus one. Um, with uh, one population variance confidence intervals, it's often n minus one. So let's suppose I got, let's say I'm doing a, a confidence interval for variance and I need to look up the critical value. So I can do that. So let's suppose I had uh, 19 degrees of freedom. Let's suppose I had a data set of 20 and I had 19 degrees of freedom. So there we go. I just put that in and we get the chi-square. Now you can see kind of visually that this does not look very normal. Chi-square is not a normal distribution. It's um, it, uh, it, it has a sort of, in fact, the smaller the degrees of freedom, the more it sort of looks very skewed right. Um, but it never really gets to fully normal. Um, this is a, a different distribution that's used a lot. This is why it matches up so nice with variance. If we remember when we studied variance sampling distributions, um, they tended to be very skewed right no matter what. So this tends to match up pretty well with this. This is why um, statistics.